When we talk about students aiming high, what exactly do we mean? What is it we want to develop in our students and how do we know when we're achieving this? Well, there are a number of indicators that can highlight that students are aiming high, including outcomes, high grades, destinations and careers. But to get there, we need to focus on raising our students' aspirations and expectations. Now, these terms are often used interchangeably, but there are important differences that have implications for how we might influence students to aim high. So let's start with raising aspirations. Aspirations are idealistic hopes for the future, whereas expectations are what you expect to happen. The difference between what people hope to achieve and expect to achieve. We need to support our students to raise their aspirations as these are the motivators and desires that will drive their achievement. It's important that we look beyond qualification assessment requirements when planning our teaching. We can work at raising the aspirations of all of our students regardless of their backgrounds in a number of ways, including providing opportunities for students to experience meaningful, technically and vocationally specific tasks and activities. They need to be exposed to role models that are representative of the communities of which they belong and the goals which they have, and receive guidance on the knowledge, skills and characteristics required to achieve these goals. But it isn't only about raising aspirations. Research has suggested that having high aspirations but low expectations often leads to low achievement, with students twice as likely to get fewer than five GCSEs at grade four than their peers who had both high aspirations and expectations. Having high aspirations without the knowledge, skills and habits needed to achieve them has been found to result in student resentment, frustration and withdrawing socially. Studies have shown time and again that one of the most influential factors that affect student achievement is their teachers. There's a growing body of research that suggests that the expectations a teacher sets for an individual student can significantly affect that student's performance. And not just having high expectations, but how these are communicated to the students. That includes how students are grouped, how challenging the work is, the class climate, the quality of the questions posed, and the feedback given, along with setting the expectations of professional behaviours. It's through our own high expectations that we help the students to develop their own high expectations of themselves. To bridge the gap between aspiration and expectation, we need to help our students to develop their self-efficacy beliefs. Students with a strong sense of self-efficacy are more likely to be intrinsically motivated and challenge themselves with difficult tasks. In order for our students to learn effectively, it's been argued that they need to be presented with tasks and activities that are just outside of their present abilities. Tasks that are too simple or easy for us to achieve quickly become boring and we're not learning. We can perform tasks, but performing isn't learning. On the other hand, tasks that are too complex can frustrate us and we just give up. Vygotsky's zone of proximal development is a place in between that we're aiming for, with tasks and skills that can be achieved with guidance and encouragement from a knowledgeable person. The thing to remember is what might be challenging for one student might be quite simple for another. Every student can learn and make progress in your sessions, but each one will have a different starting point and needs to be challenged in relation to this. It isn't about raising the bar for some students and lowering it for others. It's all about keeping the expectations high and focusing on the scaffolding and support that the students need to achieve, make progress and aim high.